it going everyone, AFC Finners here in Somerset. We are seeing former championship side Yeovil, who are currently flying in the National League South, come to be top of the table. Be good to see a club that was once established in the Football League and even managed to creep their way up to the championship. So, never been to Yeovil before, but it's always nice to come to Somerset. And where are we going in the evening, boys? Market. Great Bath Christmas Market. Hey. Should be good fun. No thing, Tom. Do you want to tell them what just happened? Finley, you tell them. All right, yeah. Try going to that pub behind us. We had 20 minutes um, to try and get food, and then they said they're not doing food, despite putting food menus everywhere. So, gave up, got a Tesco meal deal. It's been emotional, but we were the winners in that battle, I think. We did. Can't be some nice quavers. No, skips, yeah. sorry. <laughs> not with it today. Let's head over to the ground. Here we are in the fan zone. Got program for three quid, the perfect price. How are you feeling, gents? There we go. Club shop, some programs inside. Virtual ones, let's have a look. That place is cool, isn't it? This is awesome. You go for only two quiz, got an England program from when they played Italy in the 70s. Pretty good bargain. So we're about to go inside, but before we do, let's find out a bit about today's host, Yeovil Town. Yeovil Town were founded in 1895, spending their early history in non-league. After the Second World War, they achieved a giant killing in the FA Cup, knocking out Sunderland in the 48-49 season, before being knocked out by Matt Busby's Manchester United in the next round. The next few decades saw them win the Southern League three times, during which they were often applying for election to the Football League. They were a founding member of the Conference League in 1979. Although they suffered relegation in 1985, they'd win the Isthmian League to return to the Conference in 1988. They won the Conference League Cup in 1990, and there was promise when they achieved their best ever finish of fourth in the Conference in 1993. They slipped back to the Isthmian League, but returned in style, winning it in 1997 with 101 points. Gary Johnson took over in 2001 and won them the FA Trophy in his first season in charge. The next season, he took them to their finest moments as they won the conference with 95 points and were unbeaten at home. For the first ever time, they would play the Football League. They won their first Football League game and proved they weren't there just to make up the numbers by finishing in 8th position. The next season, they would be champions of League 2, ascending to League 1. Gary Johnson would leave to take over Bristol City, and in the 06-07 season, they reached the final of the League One playoffs, but lost to Blackpool. They would battle relegation over the next couple of seasons, but the return of Gary Johnson steadied the ship. After keeping them up, the next season, they were in the playoffs, and reached the final where they faced Brentford. Yeovil won 2-1 to reach a second tier for the first ever time. Unfortunately, they would only have one season in the championship, and this was followed by relegation again the next campaign along with the departure of Johnson and an FA Cup tie against Manchester United, which the Glovers lost 2-0. The next few seasons saw them battling relegation in League 2, and they faced Manchester United in the FA Cup again, this time losing 4-0. Sadly, after 16 years in the Football League, they were relegated in 2019. Things went from bad to worse when they were relegated to the National League North in 2023. However, under management of Mark Cooper, things are looking up, with the club having a brilliant start to the season that has seen them comfortably top of the league, and hopes are high that their march back to the Football League has begun. Overall, they have won four Western League titles, three Southern League Western section titles, three Southern League titles, three Southern League Cups, two Southern League Championship Cups, two Isthmian League titles, one Conference title, one Fourth Division title, one Conference League Cup, and one FA Trophy. And a bit of trivia, Legendary Aston Villa manager Ron Saunders began his management career with Yeovil in 1967, spending two years in charge of the club. So those are our hosts, Yeovil Town. Let's have a look inside their home, Hewish Park. Coffee, York and cheese pasty for seven quid. Let's try the pasty. Moment of truth. Smells good. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Just what pasty should be. You're getting good food, eh? So what you got? Sausage roll, my man. Sausage roll. I buy you all good food. Here we 
we are in our seats. I got my coffee. Hi, fix good. How are you feeling, boys? Ah, it'll be a good day. Isn't that sweet? Those kids get to be Slash from Guns N' Roses. Midway through the first half, you over been a slightly better side. Had a few decent chances, but neither side quite looked like breaking the deadlock. It's a tight, it's a tight match in the battle for promotion, first against third. Uh, oh, go for the attack, yeah. Still no nil as it stands. I'm scared it's going to be first nil nil since January. Well, a very poor first half comes to an end. Not been. <laughs> Barely been anything, you know, a couple chances to go for, but fingers crossed to get a better second half because that was very boring. <laughs> what do you reckon, boys? It's certainly fun at least. A few chances, a bit of play on them, goal in front of us, but Yeovil shooting our way, so. Yeah. Gonna Sh get smacked a few times for the ball. Shooting downhill, second half, fingers crossed, if we get a better, more entertaining second period. Half time, 0 0. Over still the better team, but it also remains nil nil. Slug is struggling to find a way through. Yeah. Keep telling them to shoot for range, but they're not listening. Maybe the message will get through. But as it stands, it remains goalless. I think it could well end that way. And the last action of the game, corner for Yeovil. Full time at Kewish Park and very much as expected. It's still nil. The first still nil we've experienced on this series since January. And what is like to be the last Grand Grand episode 2023. Just my bloody luck. But thank you, Goval. Shame we couldn't get the three points. The best of luck in your title hunts. Full time, Goval nil. I'm to the Richmond nil. Tom loved that. You're right, Tom. You'll go to market. <laughs> so one day Tom will come here and there'll be a goal. I will not, I'm not coming back here. <laughs> Revisit required. Not been a lucky day for us. We came to Bath in the intention of wandering around the Christmas market. What happened, Tom? No market. In terms of market, they have no market. They got beer, they got pizza, they got <laughs> they got Christmas lights, but they got no market. Don't know how that's happened, Christmas hasn't even happened yet, but ho ho, we've come to CZ's, but Pipe Peroni, we're enjoying ourselves. But sentimental moment, as this is pretty much probably like the last Grand Ground episode 2023. So, just like to say, everyone who supported me, Tamar and Luke, to go up and down the country this year, thank you. It means a lot that you watch our, our videos and read these vlogs and enjoy our journeys, and we'll carry on doing it. Next year, we'll see many more places. So, thanks again for all your support. Thank to Maldo for all the research and driving us up and down the country. Thank you, Luciano, for joining us. All that's left to say is Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll see you in 2024 with many more history videos and ground hopping videos. So, here's to you all. Happy holidays. See you next year. Bye. So we will start off with the welcome and this was something they did very well. My understanding from what I've read from someone that Tom Aldo interviewed for his blog is that it wasn't until recently that they did all the things outside like the live music and stuff. So it's good to see that the club has 
decide to think about how they can improve the match day experience. It's just a little thing, but having like that live music really does add and it just makes the day a lot more fun when there's like stuff to do. And I respect that making them more to the day than just the football match was really good thinking. And yeah, a lot going on, playing places you could hang outside the ground and having a retro <laughs> program shop is something that will definitely gain points for any club for me. I absolutely love that. Really welcoming group. But every member of staff we spoke to was friendly and plenty of people around us were chatty and engaging and we never felt uncomfortable there as outsiders. Really nice fan base to be amongst. So it's a very good welcome. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Food and drink, they did really well on this one too because at first I was a bit disappointed because I went to get chips from the van outside and then it turned out they didn't take hard which really annoyed me. But then when I went inside suddenly everything like made a lot more sense because they had those pasties and there were so many options available including multiple vegetarian ones or the basic snacks as well like crisps and chocolate bars. It wasn't just that, they were absolutely delicious, they were perfect temperature, crispy, really nice overall so it was very high quality stuff. And there's so many grounds I've been to where I've asked them what the options are like the roles they have and they said oh we haven't actually got that because someone's just not keeping track but no nope, they had everything you needed and it was really good quality and I think it's good thinking because a lot of clubs do like a burger and chips van outside and then sell burger and chips inside but they've obviously balanced it out by doing like pasties inside and burger and chips on the outside to like balance it out and make it so you can get different food from different places I think that's really good thinking and more clubs should take that up so Yova have definitely put a lot of thought into their food and drink and I really respect that because there's a lot of clubs this level that may not some clubs at a higher level that haven't put that much of thought into food and drink so fair play yeovil i will give you a nine out of ten for food and drink atmosphere they did a pretty good job at the atmosphere i think there were certainly one or two points where it was flat i think the fact there was a small away following probably didn't help but overall they really did get behind the team i think when you've seen a club be in the championship and they've ended up in the sixth tier it would be understandable that like a lot of people might sort of stop going to games and just lose interest but fair play they were very committed and there were points where it was a really decent atmosphere and quite loud and in spite of it being flat of points, it was still like really good when they were chanting. So they did a good job of getting behind the team, very encouraging and also very positive. It's clear that there's a very strong connection between the squad and the fans, which I love to see. So I'll probably give the atmosphere a 6.5 out of 10. Stadium. If there's not too much to complain about with it really because I think three of the stands are pretty much exactly what you need to be. They were kept really well, wasn't any rust or wear and tear or anything and the two stands either side of me looked absolutely fine both from the inside and the outside so it seems like it's a really well kept ground. The only issue was the one opposite me it kind of was a bit of a Gillingham stand but the thing is there were only like three people stood in it so I think to sort of complete the set you really need to work on that stand I do appreciate it's often where the away sports go it just doesn't look good for aesthetics to have an empty concrete stand so without a roof that nobody's standing in so hopefully they'll sort that soon given that the stadium is has got like open corners they could probably do with moving that screen that you could see or getting a bigger one because it was actually difficult to read what was on it and putting that in one of the corners just to kind of mask things up a bit the stadium's in a good area it's like in the middle of the field so it's away from everything and as a result they've been able to generate all this stuff that goes on outside so yeah the stadium adds a really good experience like i said it's in pretty good nick so i think for this level they've got a really good ground there's just a tiny bit of work to be done on it but i think overall they've done a much better job than other clubs do with keeping it maintained so i think i'll give the stadium a 6.5 out of 10. And finally, value for money is a pretty good deal, I think. It was about 15 quid, which, again, considering they were club recently in the championship, is pretty good for a ticket. It was about seven quid for the food I got, which, yeah, was absolutely fine. It, and the programmes were very reasonably priced, considering there were, like, ones in, like, the 70s, 80s and stuff. I managed to get mine for only two quid, so fair play. They're not mugging anyone off for the retro programmes that they're selling, and the normal programme is only three quid as well. So I think... They do a really good job for value for money. Again, it, like I said, it would be very easy to raise your prices saying, oh, we were once a championship team. But no, they've they've been very fair. It's very reasonably priced. And I think it offers a good experience for what you pay. So I'll probably give the value for money a 9 out of 10. In the last episode of Ground to Ground, it will be released in 2023. That was Hewish Park, home of Yeovil Town. Just my bloody luck, it finished nil nil. Thank you, Yeovil, for a very nice day. Let's hope you can find your way back to the Football League very soon. Once again, thank you for watching. I've been AFC Finners. See you next time and stick with us as we go ground to ground. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. AFC Finners out.